We're joined by Dalia Ziada, an award-winning writer and the director at the Meme Centre for Middle East and Eastern Mediterranean Studies. She joins us tonight from Cairo. Good evening to you and thank you for joining us. So two-thirds of Ethiopia's population currently has no access to electricity. This dam could solve that problem. Why shouldn't they go ahead and use hydropower? Uh, in fact, um I would speak from the perspective of how the Egyptians are seeing this. Uh, of course, we would like the Ethiopian people to have access to electricity. We would like their problem that makes more than 60% of population deprived of uh, basic uh, energy resource like electricity to have this. And actually, Egypt is not minding uh, the, the building of the dam itself. But all what we are calling for is to make sure that we still have a fair share in the Nile River. Because actually, contrary to what uh, Mr. Abiy Ahmed, the prime minister of Ethiopia, is saying uh, to media and in public that he cares for the interests of Egypt and Sudan, and he does not want to hurt the downstream countries. This is not the reality on, on, the, on the ground. Uh, the reality is that uh, there is a very strong nationalistic propaganda inside Ethiopia that promotes uh, or claims that Ethiopia owns the Nile River, and thus it can keep the water of the Nile behind the dam and sell it to downstream countries for money, and or even to other uh, uh, neighbor countries in Africa, which is going to be very dangerous, very uh, negatively affecting our economy and also our uh, our relation, uh, our cultural and social relation to the Nile. Actually, most of Egyptians look at the Nile not only as um, a source for clean water, for agriculture and drinking. It's not a matter of, uh, not only a matter of uh, water security, but actually it's a matter of cultural identity. Our identity is very much attached to this Nile River. And now we feel like it's it's being stolen from us. Yes, I understand. So this is the problem. Yes, I, I understand that. And, and it's right, isn't it? Egypt and Sudan and Ethiopia have all sat down and talked about this in the past. Um, is Egypt right then when it says that Ethiopia is actually violating previous agreements when it goes ahead and uses this dam? Actually, the negotiations have been going on for uh, almost two decades now. Uh, Ethiopia all the time says that it's willing to do negotiations, but it wants to keep it on regional level, make it only, uh, um, as they say, an African issue that should be solved within Africa. They refuse any intervention by any international powers or uh, organizations like the United Nations, for example, despite Egypt and Sudan attempts, several attempts actually to include other uh, uh, international and regional players. And this led us to the current situation where Ethiopia is unilaterally going on with building the dam, uh, uh, first, uh, first building the dam, then filling the first stage and the second stage without any consultations with Egypt and, uh, and the Sudan. Uh, and, and now starting the electricity production operations, which, which actually brings us to a very important question. Okay, we understand that Sudan want, uh, sorry, Ethiopia wants to, the Ethiopian government wants to provide electricity to its people. Fine, but actually clicking a button on the screen won't just send the electricity to the people. There must be an infrastructure that supports what uh, the dam is going to produce. This infrastructure, Ethiopia does not have up till this moment. And Egypt have offered many, has offered many times to help Ethiopia with building this infrastructure. But unfortunately, Ethiopia is insisting to go on unilaterally uh, violating the declaration of principles signed with Egypt and Sudan in 2015, which actually stipulates that Ethiopia should consult with Egypt and Sudan before taking any action uh, related to filling the dam or starting the operations of the dam. Well, Ethi and unfortunately, Ethiopia never committed. Well, uh, Ethiopia is, is it's unlikely to back down on this, isn't it? I mean, this is something they've spent millions on. It's uh, kind of something of a national dream for them that's been in the pipeline uh, for, for decades, as you said. And um, what, what are the risks here? Is Egypt prepared to go to war over this? 
Uh, that's a very interesting question because actually there are many voices inside Egypt now that are saying, okay, we are fed up with negotiations and diplomatic channels. It's time to launch war on Ethiopia. Uh, okay, although it's 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 a very radical way of, of of looking at the issue, I think the military option is still open. The Egyptian president. Uh, El Sisi before said that Egypt have all options open and it can take it can take actions. He said it very clearly that risk the stability and security of this region if it has to. But up till now, this although this is an option that we have, it does not seem realistic. Egypt is still insistent on keeping the security and the stability of the region. Uh, is still uh, is still interested also in 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 making sure the Ethiopian people uh, get what they want and get well. But all what we are looking for in Egypt, I mean, the Egyptian government, what it is looking for is cooperation from the Ethiopian side. The Ethiopian side does not want to cooperate. That only, only, only the prime minister, Abiy Ahmed, is saying that we care for the Egyptian people and so on. But do you? Is it is it really what you're doing? This is not what he's doing. He's actually risking our future, risking our uh, economy, and and also, by the way, it's not only an African issue. It's also an international issue because if if uh, anything happens in this region, it's you know very close to the it's at the Red Sea, a horn of Africa, Red Sea, and you have the Yemen crisis at the other side. It will be yes. a big issue for the for the whole region. So it's an international security issue that I think. Everyone should intervene to help resolve it before it's too late. It's certainly a fascinating topic and it's great to talk to you. Dalia Ziada, thank you very much indeed. And thank that you. brings us... Uh